There's a long list of Republican candidates hoping to make it to the White House. But first, they need to snag the GOP nomination. One of them is Vivek Ramaswamy, the first candidate to formally qualify for the first debate after pledging his support for whoever is the nominee. I had the chance to exclusively sit down with Mr. Ramaswamy as he stopped by South Florida. Here's our conversation on Decision 2024. Vivek, thank you so much for joining us. It's good to be here. Welcome to Miami. It's good to be here. Absolutely. So you're here at a conference that's empowering women. Tell us the importance of that for you. Well, look, I think that one of the things that we've seen in the last few years in this country is an assault on womanhood, about even rejecting the definition of what it means to be a woman. And I think that more importantly, we need to restore an attitude in this country where no matter who you are, where your parents came from, what your biological sex is, you can get ahead in this country with your own hard work, your own commitment, your own dedication. That's the American dream, and I want that American dream to be available to everyone, regardless of the genetic attributes they inherit on the day they're born. And so that's a big part of my message. So you're in Miami, in the state of Florida, and there are three other candidates vying for the same position to be the Republican nominee. What differentiates you from former President Donald Trump or from Governor DeSantis? Sure. So I'm leading us in this race to start running to something. For many years, conservatives, we've been running from something. I think we need to start running to a vision of our own, to our vision of what it means to be an American today. We're bringing young people along in this movement in a way that hasn't happened from any Republican professional politician in a very long time. I also think I have the best understanding of how to actually reform the federal government. Coming in as an outsider, I've lived the American dream. My parents came to this country with no money 40 years ago. I've gone on to found multi-billion dollar companies. I did it while marrying my wife, Apoorva, raising two sons. That is the American dream. And the thing that moves me is I want to make that dream available to the next generation of young Americans. And I think I'm doing that in this race in a way that nobody else quite is, even though I respect my fellow competitors, who I really view as colleagues in this race, I'll need their help, but I'll be the right person to lead this country from the White House. So you're a tech entrepreneur and you consider yourself an outsider. Why do you think you can do this job as president of the United States? So I think we're in the middle of a national identity crisis. People my age, I'm a millennial. I'm the youngest person ever to run. How old are you? I'm 37. So you would be the youngest? I'd be the youngest president ever elected if I'm elected. And I understand my generation. We are hungry for a cause. We are starved for purpose and meaning and identity. At a time in our national history when faith, patriotism, hard work, family, these things have disappeared. And so others on the left, for example, will fill that vacuum with the vision of race, gender, sexuality, and climate. I want to lead us to not just criticize that agenda, but to talk about the value of each individual, the family, the nation, and yes, God. Individual, family, nation, God, that beats race, gender, sexuality, and climate if we have the courage to actually stand for it. That's what I think we need in the U.S. presidency and in the White House now. We need an answer to the question of what it even means to be an American today. I have a vision on the answer to that question. I think it has been a long time since Ronald Reagan that we had someone who led from the White House with an actual positive vision of this country that is grounded in the truth. And that's the way I'm gonna lead and that's what called me into this race. Even though I'm young, I think that actually helps me reach the next generation far more effectively than an old generation of professional politicians. You talked about what's important for you, but what do you think are the most important issues facing Americans today? Well, I think the main issue facing Americans is the loss of opportunity. Young people like me, I'm a millennial. I got my first job in New York City at a finance firm on the eve of the 2008 financial crisis after I graduated college in 2007. Young people are disillusioned, being told that there's an American dream where if you work hard, you get ahead. And yet there's crony capitalism on the other side, raging inflation across the country, difficulty in matching up a four-year college degree with the skill sets that real employers need that they could have gotten from a vocational education that didn't burden them with that debt. So I think that the real issues in this country are both cultural and economic. We have a loss of self-confidence in this country. Young people, all of us, 
we've lost our national self-confidence. And so I'm in this race to restore that self-confidence of what it means to be an American. Once we've answered that questions, our economic challenges become that much easier because we have the confidence to take risks, start businesses and build them, as I've done. I think once we regain our national self-confidence, that's also when we can start standing up with the spine on the global stage again. Stand up to China. Don't just take a Chinese spy balloon that floats across half our country. If that were a Russian spy balloon, we'd have shot it down and ratcheted up sanctions. But we don't have the confidence to do it to China because we're dependent on them for our modern way of life. So I think those are the big issues are deep cultural loss of self-confidence that leads to weakness both in our economy and in our foreign policy. And that's why I'm in this race to lead us out of that national identity crisis. But you are running for this position for the nomination. And the reality is that former President Trump has 44 percent as of today of the vote, according to some polls. No, it's fair. There's a big difference in terms of those numbers and where the second one, which is Governor DeSantis, and then perhaps yourself. You have supported the president in the past. He has just had a third indictment. Do you feel that those indictments are politicized? I do feel the indictments are politicized. Why? So look, it would be a lot easier for me, by the way. I'm polling at third in the Republican national primary right now, nationally. It would be easier for me if Trump were eliminated from competition. So this doesn't come from a place of self-interest. But on principle, I've read each of those indictments, selective omissions of fact and law, the use of novel legal theories that have never been used to obtain a conviction, all in the middle of an election, three separate indictments at the same time. This is a politicized persecution, and I think it sets a dangerous precedent in our country. I don't want to see us become some banana republic where the party in power is able to repeatedly use police force to indict its political opponents. If it fits one, if the shoe fits one foot today, it'll fit the other foot tomorrow. That's a dangerous downward slide for our country. I want to lead us forward, e pluribus unum, from many one, not to a national divorce, but to national unity. You don't feel That's like you did I anything wrong? Well, there's a difference between a bad judgment and committing a crime. So would I have made the same judgments that Trump made? No, I would not have. But a bad judgment is not a crime. And I do think he was, by and large, an excellent president. I want to build on the legacy he laid, but I think I can take our America First agenda even further. And you're right. I am polling at third place, but I started at 0.0% in March. Many people across this country still don't yet know who I am. And we haven't even had the first debate yet. So I expect that I will be the nominee. I expect that we will win this election in a landslide, like what Reagan did in 1980. That's what I'm going to deliver in 2024. And that will unite this country to say that the division that the media or social media feeds you, it is artificial. Most of us in this country share the same basic values in common, from meritocracy to self-governance to the rule of law to free speech. Most Americans I know, regardless of their partisan affiliation, agree on the basic rules of the road of what it means to be an American. That's what we need to revive. I'm in this race to do it and reach a new generation to bring them along. And that's why I think we're going to be successful. Quickly, I do want to address Governor DeSantis. You said that former President Trump did a great or a good job as president. Do you feel that he's done a good job as governor? I do. I think Governor DeSantis has been largely an effective governor. Of course, there's things you can pick at here and there. But I think there have been a lot of good governors, Republican governors, from Kristi Noem to Brian Kemp in Georgia. I put Ron DeSantis on that list as a good governor. And I think that he can continue to be a great governor in this state. As I said, I view all of my fellow competitors, not even as competitors, but as colleagues in our national revival. We all have our role to play. But I think in the White House, we need an outsider. We don't want a super PAC puppet. We want a patriot who speaks the truth. I am not reliant on the mega donor class. I've invested over $15 million of my own hard-earned money into this campaign because I did not want to take a tin can with a hat in hand asking a bunch of mega donors for permission to run. I think people are hungry for the truth. We stand for the truth. That's what makes us American. Two issues before I let you go that I do want to address. One of them is abortion because the governor signed a ban, a six-week ban on abortion. We, do you agree with that? Is that something that you would also do? So I am unapologetically pro-life. I will say that I'm running for U.S. president, not governor. And I've been clear on my stance here. This is a matter for the states. So I do not support federal governmental intervention here. 
Roe versus Wade, I think, was correctly overturned, and I stand on the side of principle. I don't yet see any constitutional basis for the federal government to act here. I'm open to a legal scholar convincing me otherwise, but I haven't seen a basis in the Constitution yet. And so I do not believe that the federal government should intervene. This is a matter for the states. I believe in federalism. I read that you believe in securing the border. I do. Here in the state of Florida, we have another type of border on the water. Yes. Many come from Haiti and many from Cuba. What would be your Cuba policy? So I believe that the reason many Cuban Americans strive to come to this country, I think many of them end up being conservative with pro-capitalist values when they come here, is they know what they're leaving behind. They come here to make a choice. So for people who are going to make contributions to this country and do it legally, come through the front door with civic commitments to this country, come here not just to be an immigrant, but to be a settler in this country and live by our national values. That's a legal immigration process that I support. But I am a hardliner against illegal immigration. That's unfair to the citizens who live here. It's even unfair to the other people who are trying to go through the legal process as well. So I draw a hard line between illegal immigration and legal immigration. I'm dead set against any illegal migration into this country. I'll use the military to secure the border if necessary. But when it comes to immigration policy more generally, we should ask the question of what advances the interests of the homeland, of Americans who live here? And are there immigrants who can come to this country that can add value to this country? The answer is yes. They should do it legally. Vivek, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Thank you. It's great to be with you.